I tried to read the, the report. It was really thick, but I read that chapter on infusion. And, and I realized that infusion is something that's been, always been part of industry and part of investment, but it's often overlooked. And it's um, not part, often not part of our, uh, of our policies and our strategies. So um, uh, in one eye, we talk about um, getting a lot of investments, and that is happening. We're probably anywhere between six to eight billion dollars a year, be certainly better than before. Uh, but w what, 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 uh, uh, after one eye, it seems that a lot of attention goes to three eye right away. No? So we're measuring, oh, you know, what's our, um, what's our uh, R&D spending, that kind of thing. And being, a, I, I work a lot with a UP Engineering uh, College, no? and, you know, there are, you know, there are R&D people working two, three decades on R&D work that doesn't get commercialized. No? And, and, and that's, and that's going to happen. That's important. But I think what, ha what we do recognize in reaction to, to the presentation of Dr. Maria is that infusion is something that has to be a thoughtful process for us. So let me give you firm specific examples of infusion. No? Did you know that 70, uh, 70 or 80 percent of our pain is locally made? No? In spite of globalization, 70, 80 percent throughout decades, it's still domestic. No? There's many reasons. And one of the reasons is that we have very strong local players. Some, um, the biggest, I cannot name companies, no? but the biggest pain company here is already the second largest in Southeast Asia. But how do they do it? They don't, they, you know, I mean, they're not a multinational, they didn't have this, but they work with, through infusion. They work a lot with leading global machine suppliers, global um, uh, raw material suppliers. So the guys like this in, in Southeast Asia, they, got, they get the first crack whenever a global chemical company or resin company or solvent company comes up with something new. No? Then, then they try to develop it. And that's how they co uh, continue um, uh, their, their, uh, their lead. I'll give you another example. Uh, foam. Yeah, again, you probably know the company. 80% of foam here in the Philippines is locally supplied. No? Um, and again, this, this company is wholly owned, wholly local Filipino, deal with the best machine suppliers in the world, whether that's from, uh, whether that's from Europe or from Japan, and deal with the best um, raw material supplier. No? So what I'm saying is that um, some large local companies get it, that it is important. Um, R&D in the frontiers is important, but what's more important right now and for growth is the infusion. And that to me wasn't was an obvious before I, before I read that report. So I think it's important for policymakers to see, you know, we, you know, we got a lot of incentives for R&D, no doubt about it. No? Um, but I still have to see, and I, be, I may be missing it, on how to incentivize or how do we support infusion. Because not all infusion works. Huh? So let's say Plastic packaging company, machine supplier from Europe would say, this is the best and the latest and you can make this. And they spend a few million dollars and then it doesn't work. The, the machine doesn't, may or uh, may be working, but it may not be the right one. It was a wrong bet. And you know what? When you go to industries, there's a lot of machineries that doesn't work. Because, you know, it's, it's part of the process. When you have a plant, there, eventually there will be capital bets that's not going to work. But it's part of it. But if you're a small medium, making that mistake is gonna be, you know, it's gonna kill you. No, so um, I think that's, I, you know, I, that, that's something I'm gonna bring back to NBC uh, because we work on um, uh, our new thrust. Interestingly, is in agriculture and food security. NBC has never done that. We we had a summit uh, just Monday, and and Dr. Shell was there, and um, we're we working on three things: working with cooperatives. Agri-tech and infrastructure, no? And then the second is that we are working with USAID in advanced manufacturing. Now, I think between agriculture, advanced manufacturing, I think our next step would be the, the big part of the rest of manufacturing. You probably know that the biggest sector in manufacturing is food production, no? 
Sa electronics. Electronics is the biggest exporter, but food, 40 to 50 percent is food production. And then you got steel, cement, chemicals, marami. No? So I think that's where we need to concentrate because, you know, I. In terms of infusion, yes, we have a, a lot of uh, people who can now companies that can make electronic and uh, electronic semiconductor. But when you try to connect that to the market and the Philippine consumer, which is our big resource, um, a lot of those products are not really doesn't are not for our consumers. What our consumers are for um, uh, construction material, food, and uh, clothing, and everything. Uh, so let me stop there. Thank you. <laughs>